G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, as we can see, market cap has moved up. Bitcoin uh, has tricked everybody. <laughs> well, maybe not everybody, but definitely tricked a few people. There were some bearish people out there. I was sort of unsure, but I was you know, somewhat suspicious that Bitcoin was just going to keep traveling up. Uh, and it has done that. Now, I did think it might come down and cover the CME gap. So we'll have a look at that very shortly, but we can see it's quite a move. The whole entire market went now up to $376 billion. So, you know, we were nearly at $400 billion not that long ago, and I think we're going to get back there pretty quick. We're not going to be far off at all. What I'm really pleased about is ETH gas prices are coming down, and I think a lot of that is to do with... Uh, Bitcoin uh, is moving uh, and so is ETH itself. So there's a lot of money being piled into them uh, and not a lot of money sort of piling into, you know, the new projects and DeFi and things like that. DeFi is making a comeback, don't get me wrong. Uh, and there are still new projects that people are interested in, but it's more just people sort of buying at the moment rather than, you know, jumping on Uniswap and looking for the latest thing and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I'm glad that the ETH gas prices are down, though. That's really, really good. And we can see the BTC dominance. It's still sitting around that 57% mark. Uh, you know, it has been, it's definitely been higher before and it's been lower, but it's really been kind of, you know, tightly, you know, stuck in that sort of range for a while. So, you know, interesting. We'll have to wait and see if Bitcoin breaks above 12,500 and particularly if it gets above that kind of $13,800, $14,000 mark, I think you'll see the dominance change. I think this will rise, I wouldn't say significantly, but I think it'll get above the 60% and might even be around the 65%. I think you'll see a lot of money piling into Bitcoin at that stage. But don't get me wrong, once Bitcoin breaks the $20,000 mark uh, and starts its next you know, leg up to wherever it goes from there, you will see a lot of money pile into altcoins after that. That's really going to get the market crazy and enthusiastic. But I think this uh, Bitcoin dominance, if particularly when we get over 12,500, I think you will see uh, that grow fairly somewhat significantly anyway. Like I said, I think we'll be above 60%, and I think we might even get to around 65 possibly 70%, but I don't know about 70%. But expect to see that move. Now let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart at the moment. All right, so as we can see, we just had another move here. Now, I did see the Bitcoin price at like 11200 and I think it was $47 or something. So technically, that should have filled um, the CME gap. We can see what's it come down to. There we go. It came down to 11168 This is on Bitstamp at least. But when we go over to the BTC uh, futures chart, that gap didn't get filled. So it's still there at 11,000, uh, what is it, 11,190. So again, I don't know how that didn't get covered uh, according to bit stamps, but really more so 11,000 sort of 100, uh, you know, 110. So we've still got that gap there. So, you know, watch this space, that gap could get filled. Again, we've still got that gap back down here. Uh, no, sorry, over here. Uh, 9,000 uh, sort of 600 you know whether that will get filled who knows most CME gaps get filled it's like the high 90% but not all so that may never get filled and look this may never get filled as well if Bitcoin is getting on its massive sort of run uh, you know this could just get left behind and again we're really you know pushing you know that $11,700 range so I like to go back to this chart 11,700 uh, and it is just on a move but what concerns me the most one two three four five six now so that's six green candles in a row I would say there's going to be a pullback and that's what makes me think we'll definitely come back and at least cover off on this 11,000 sort of $100 CME gap so just uh, be mindful and beware uh, you know, we still could have another green day or two, but then I think there's going to be a pullback to at least that CME gap. That's just my gut feeling. It's a little bit over exuberant. Let's go over here and we'll have a look. What's the fear and greed index telling us? I'm going to say it's quite bullish at the moment, and that's what makes me nervous, and I wouldn't be putting too much money. 
still sort of neutral. There you go, but just leaning towards uh, the greed side. So for me, watch for a pullback sometime this week. I'm quite sure it'll happen. That's not to say Bitcoin won't pump uh, a little bit harder for another day or two maybe, but yeah. I would say there's going to be a red candle day coming up fairly shortly and I'm fairly confident it'll come back and cover that $11,100 CME gap. So if you're looking for a price to get in, that might not be a good price and if you're looking to short the market, uh, may not be a bad sort of time to do it, whether it's exactly now or not, I don't know. And again, none of this is financial advice and I don't leverage trade. I generally don't trade, I do a bit of swing trading, I'm an investor. So really, I'll probably have my buy order set for around about that $11,110 mark uh, for a buy order for Bitcoin, and I'll wait for it to pull back and cover that. But again, th there's no guarantees that that will happen, that's just what I'm thinking. Again, this trend line here has been broken, has been negated. But I wouldn't be surprised if we don't uh, sort of come back and sort of retest it. And again, right now at the moment, it is around that 11000 almost $100 mark, a little bit higher. So I don't think we'll fall over and come back down here. I think that's unlikely. But I definitely do think we're going to come down and cover off this sort of mark, somewhere roughly around about here. And I think it'll be sometime this week. Exactly when, I don't know. Uh, but I just think that will happen and I'm, it's probably going to happen in the next sort of day or two. This is a few too many green candles we can see over here. One, two, three, four, and then they had one, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and let's say there's probably about 14 there and then we really got some choppy action. So I suspect we're going to see something uh, like this uh, again very, very shortly. I don't know if we'll see anything like this again. Uh, but it's quite possible. Time will tell. But what I wanted to do is have a look at the other markets. How are they going? Are they somewhat similar to this? Now, we've been hor highly correlated to the S&P 500, and people are saying we've been uh, correlated to gold. So let's have a look at the S&P 500. And sure enough, still fairly highly correlated. So this is still making uh, a move up, and it even had its red day here. But what I found interesting is the gold. Gold is not doing the same. Gold is sort of having a bit of a pullback right here. So we aren't as correlated to gold, or this, this is the gold and silver index, but we're not as correlated to it uh, as you know what has previously been thought. And my personal opinion is Bitcoin at some stage is going to break away from these other markets and it's not going to be correlated. You know, I, I think gold's still going to do well. I think there's going to be a another crash coming at some stage uh, and for sure it'll be in the stock market uh, and Ivan on tech even said the other day and I totally agree and he got it from another guy I can't remember the guy's name I think once news turns a bit more positive and there's a cure uh, for COVID and things like that I think that is when we're going to see some tightening you know all the money printing will stop because uh, they will you know, the governments and the banks and that, they'll be like, rightio, everything's going to be fine. We can't just, you know, sort of recklessly spend anymore. And I think we're going to see a big, massive crash. Uh, and unfortunately, it'll be in Bitcoin as well uh, and the stock market and things like that. But I think Bitcoin will recover quickly and it'll recover a lot better. So for me, that doesn't mean I'm not going to invest in Bitcoin or anything anymore. I still think it's the best bet. Uh, and along with altcoins, but I do think there's going to be a fairly severe correction. Uh, and I think it'll be next year sometime. Exactly when next year, I'm not sure. And exactly how far we'll crash, uh, I don't know. And I'm not really going to try to be timing it or anything like that. I'm just going to make sure I've got some uh, cash sitting on the side for when it does happen. I'll just, you know, try and, you know, work out where the bottom may be, look for a trend reversal, and then I'll, you know, put, you know, a lot of cash into it at that stage or, or a lot of the cash that I have at that time not that I ever have a lot of cash but so that's really what I'm what looking out for at the moment is number one we're not that correlated with gold at the moment gold is still struggling to you know get back up to its high point now unfortunately for me I bought some uh, gold just about the peak uh, so I've lost a little bit of money but I bought some silver and silver has done pretty well uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. And again, it's not that I'm worried about either of them. I think they're both going to continue to go up in the long run. 
uh, just gold it hasn't performed as well and I was unlucky that I bought it just under sort of two thousand dollars per ounce and it's definitely a little bit lower at the moment now an interesting story that I did find G7 will oppose Libra launch until regulations in place I am glad that uh, this is being slowed down I like Facebook the app I'm not a massive fan of Facebook the company you know the things that they've done with our data and they've been selling it and not telling us and things like that so I am really worried about them having a yeah having a coin that will probably end up near being a global currency uh, with how big Facebook is and then what they'll do with it you know I guess if all the regulations can be put in place to really you know rein in Facebook with some of their you know, their business ideologies and things like that and you know the way they've behaved uh, you know they can't be selling our private data and you know some of the dodgy sort of stuff that they've done I worry about them with a with a global sort of coin that may well become a sort of reserve global currency in the future so anyway I'm glad that uh, G7 uh, is opposing it uh, but it doesn't sound like it's going to last forever but let's have a look uh, where we go no global stablecoin project should begin operation until it adequately addresses relevant legal regulatory and oversight requirements totally agree countries representing the world's largest economy said in a draft of a statement that they would initially oppose the launch of Facebook's Libra project I'm glad got to be heavy regulated for Facebook unfortunately because of some of the uh, things that they've done in the past if they hadn't have done all the you know privacy breaches and all the rest of it I wouldn't want over regulation but because they have it just goes to show that they need to be heavy reg heavily regulated especially in this space according to an October 12th report from Reuters central bankers and finance ministers from the United States Canada Japan Germany France Italy and the UK also known as the uh, group of seven or G7 said it would halt global stablecoin projects pending appropriate o regulatory oversight so it's not just Libra but Libra uh, is one of the bigger ones that they're, I'm sure concerned about uh, the statement comes from representatives of seven countries assembled in, assembled in June 2019 to examine how central banks can regulate cryptocurrencies the group has raised concerns over how to ensure digital asset company uh, assets comply with anti-money laundering laws and there have been tons of problems with that and you know unfortunately banks were the the biggest problem you know they like to say oh bitcoin and all the rest of it you know very little uh, criminal activity was done with Bitcoin in comparison to how much was done with cash and through our big banks they have been the worst offenders uh, and unfortunately yeah governments aren't overly keen on really going down too hard on them they will uh, you know hurt them in the hip pocket with money but no one's ever been jailed or anything like that and if me or you do were to you know launder money like the banks had we'd be in jail forever so a bit of a double standard there but anyway consumer protection rules and other regulatory matters uh, so complying with that a G7 report last October stated that global stable coins posed a threat to the global financial system you know they could but again our banks are a bigger threat uh, and some of the you know, nefarious acts that they've been involved in as a result Facebook's Libra uh, stable coin may not get approval from the necessary regulators and I kind of hope it doesn't really in the end I, I think Facebook's big enough we don't need them becoming any bigger and you know without heavy regulatory uh, regimes uh, around them yeah I fear what they would do Cointelegraph reported last year that France had teamed up with Germany Italy Spain and the Netherlands to prevent Libra from launching in Europe uh, and it sounds like they're going to have a hard time whether they can really stop uh, the Libra coin or not who knows we'll have to wait and see but yeah again Facebook the app love it I'll probably spend too much time on it like most people Facebook the company you know I don't completely hate them or anything like that I'm just I don't like what they did with our privacy you know and they told lies that they weren't doing it it was uh, showed that they were they were selling our you know data to people and things like that so I am extremely worried that a company like that may have a global uh, reserve asset uh, and become part of our financial uh, institutions going forwards that's just me though all right so again the market's doing well I am you know nervous that there's going to be a pullback at some stage I'm you know somewhat confident that the eleven thousand one hundred dollar CME gap will get filled but look at the moment there is a lot of momentum behind Bitcoin we can see the volume is growing 
you know it was kind of pulled back a little bit here pulled back a little bit but then the volume is really spiked and again that was sort of more to do with the weekend i'm sure and now it's really started to pump i mean it's tuesday here uh, in australia very early tuesday morning so it'll be late monday night uh, over in the states i think that's where that volume's coming in it's the start of the week we'll have to wait and see how long that lasts uh and you know do we break twelve thousand? do we get up to twelve and a half thousand? i don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon i think there's going to be a pullback before that happens again i do think that that uh, cme gap will probably get filled but look i could be wrong we'll have to wait and see anyway that's it for me stay safe be kind to one another I don't know how you couldn't be on that game train at the moment. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.